um, my session here. My name is Phil Horning. I'm an enterprise security architect here at Akamai, um, specializing in abuse and fraud, as well as API security, and also having some previous history, um, quite a few years as being both the external and internal auditor. Um, so today, we'll be jumping into addressing compliance concerns in your API security strategy. So let's jump into the fun world of compliance here. So today we'll be talking about how APIs are becoming more targeted, why these APIs are coming into that compliance focus, uh, how compliance requirements are shifting to address these API threats that have been coming up, um, the top questions that you should be asking about your API environment and how it relates to your compliance there, and then also a few pointers about how to simplify your API compliance strategy. All right, so to build the picture, well, the past few years, API has been more and more targeted. This last year, we saw nearly a third of all web-based attacks were targeting APIs. Now, this is where we're seeing the month-to-month -month trend, but also there's been year-over-year -year trend of increasing attacks on APIs. Well, that's because APIs are now more prevalent. They've been there but now they are be more utilized by systems. So when we think about that, that creates our attack surface, a much larger attack surface for these APIs that could be potentially exposed. And so what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a lot of common problems happening. So the top few problems around APIs, we're seeing HTTP-based attacks in which weaknesses in that API protocol is now being uh, taken advantage of. There's now attackers being able to, to, to do and perform unexpected actions. They're taking advantage of active sessions and doing abuse into that se a session and gaining access into those authorized traffic to be able to access sensitive data. And continuing on from that, SQLI or SQL injections are occurring. So those APIs that are talking to those backend databases now they're able to trick them to say, hey, no, give me this data. I want that data, or I'm going to access all the database. They're able to manipulate APIs to do what they want them to do. And also another common problem we've been seeing um, that actually was seen in the 2023 SANS survey is inventory. Over 57% of those respondents we're saying that their accuracy of their API inventory was only between 25 to 75%. But now you also add in another 14% of that survey that says, we're not even sure if we have an inventory at all. And another few percent that was that below that 25% marker, you're closing in on about 80% of respondents. We're saying, we don't really have a great inventory. I don't know about you, but 75% being the top number, isn't a great number to say, well, we have about a quarter of our APIs that are unknown and uh, that could be out there that we have no tracking of. Something, maybe we have some rogue ones, maybe we have zombie APIs, the ones that just won't go away because we turned off the system that we haven't taken the time to turn off. So there's a lot of different problems that we're seeing with APIs out there. So, and why is that an issue? Well, APIs can have access to a lot of sensitive information. If I myself am trying to access, let's say some health records through my health app or something like that. So I authenticate through the app that talks to a system that says, hey, let's grab records for Phil. And so now I'm able to see in my presentation or the UI layer, my data specifically for my medical information that I wanna look at. Maybe I wanna see what my doctor's appointment is. But the attacker can exfil into that too. That API session that is authenticated in to say, hey, this is Phil, he's gonna access this database over here. We need to access that to pull his records. Well, so he gets into my session, acts like he's me through that active session, then comes in and now that next API, he's able to inject certain commands that he wants to say, not don't pull just Phil's, pull everyone's data, because I'm going to change the parameters on that, because there's no validation. 
there's no fine grain access controls applied to that API that's coming in. So why is that important? Well, now he has access to everything that's on that database. And this is actually a real world example. This happened at an exercise equipment company where this attacker was able to change that backend API to say, no, I want everything. I'm gonna change that because there was no fine grained access controls. So now, not only does he have access to just my information, but everyone's. And since these APIs can get to that backend honeypot of information and all this sensitive data that's back there, personally identifiable information, protected health information, credit card numbers, business information, classified, all that stuff, all these different things. Well, what we know is that with sensitive information comes compliance. And there are a lot of compliance initiatives out there. A few notable ones, like the global ones that thinking about payment cards, like PCI DSS. We also have other uh, bigger ones like GDPR for privacy, personally identifiable information. HIPAA high tech, that is all about protecting health information here in the US. And even states have their own regulations that they've been passing, like California passing its privacy components. So there's a lot of different things out here. And depending on what you do, what data you have, where that data is, you may have one or more of these compliance initiatives that you have to abide by. It's a lot of different things we have to look into. There could be a, a plethora of different things out there that we have to abide by for those requirements. So let's dive a little bit further into this and say, what about APIs do I need to start thinking about? Well, let's take the big one, payment card industry, PCI DSS 4.0. Now, this is a new one that just was become that, that excuse me, that became a requirement uh, here in March 2024. So now all your new audits related to payment cards are now going to be utilizing these new standards for 4.0. You will have until your next audit to become compliant with those. But the auditor will come to play with you to say, hey, what are you doing? to address these concerns. Now, the concerns that we're seeing now with the updates and APIs that are specifically being called out, requirement six, talking about bespoke and custom software, being able to protect that, make sure that all the vulnerabilities are found and patched, making sure abuse isn't happening. And then when we look at requirement 10, those are all about logs. And that says, hey, make sure you're grabbing API as part of that logs. You need to be making sure your API activity is logged. And then also performing external vulnerability scans are including APIs for vulnerabilities too. Now there is one more too that's not a part of this. That's 2.2.7, I believe, talking about authentication and saying APIs related to authentication need to be secure. So there are specific callouts that are now being incorporated into compliance initiatives out there. And so it's growing. They're catching up. Now, a couple of big ones here, HIPAA high tech, GDPR, they're on the right. They're starting to talk about APIs. Now it's always been applied, but APIs are now being even more considered into them to say, what are you doing? protect that data that's going through the APIs because that API landscape has blown up. Now it's being more utilized and it's now being a target. So how are you protecting against those common attacks? Now open banking API, not quite a regulation or a compliance uh, initiative as I like to call it. It's actually just the standard to say, hey, for bank to bank communication or financial services, here's some APIs that you know are standard to be able to talk to each other. But there is actually legislation going around that might be passed 
to actually apply standards to that, to say, how are you protecting that? Because that is a lot of sensitive information to be passing around. So things are starting to catch up and there may be even more callouts between the compliance initiatives that are out there. So let's look at some of the most common concerns out there that we've seen. So a lot of customers I've heard is, I have a lack of visibility. I have no idea of all my APIs inside my network. I don't know if I have rogue APIs or zombie APIs that are still out there. I have no idea. I don't have anything documented, just like we were looking at with that inventory stat. And then also, we can't see if our APIs are being abused. Is there uh, an API that you know is changing behavior, that's now accessing things it shouldn't be, that has broken into somebody's authenticated session? Misconfigured APIs. We're throwing APIs out there without any kind of development lifecycle to them, or any checks or any testing to it. So there might be misconfigurations that allows that doesn't have any rate limits, for example. So now that could be abused. The access these APIs have to sensitive data is also another one. Don't know. Lack of documentation. We don't have configurations written. We don't understand um, where we need to include this in our process. We don't have it in our policy. We don't have it as a part of any kind of checks or testing or best practices. And then also inadequate governance over your APIs. You may have a governance system in place for, let's say, software development or system development, any of those areas, but there is a large lack of APIs to be incorporated or be checked or anything around that in that life cycle there. So those are some of the concerns, and these do relate to the compliance areas. That's where some of these things also come back to play to say, hey, what do I need to start thinking about? And so that goes down into what are our top 10 questions that we need to ask ourselves? The first three here are all about data, not quite the APIs, but more of saying, what data do we have? You can't understand what compliance um, regulations you have to abide by if you don't understand what data you have. If you have medical data, if you have sensitive personal information, and whose data is that? And then also going into the where. Where is that data stored? Where is it coming from? How are we transmitting it? Who has access to it? So for example, if you're a company based in California and you have, let's say, your population of users for your data, um, and let's say you provide medical services and you, your uh, customer base is in the US and Europe, and then you have folks accessing uh, components and supporting your systems from the Philippines. Well, let's see how many compliance regulations that would be potentially. So you could have uh, California's law, CCPA for privacy. You would have US's law for HIPAA high tech. You would also have potentially payment cards, PCI DSS. You would also have GDPR as a part of that. And then also the Philippines with their API security mandate might also apply too. So now you have potentially up to five different compliance components just from that basic level of looking at who, what, and where that data is. So answering number four. Now, number five, how accurate is our inventory? Do we have an inventory? Do we know where everything is and what it's doing for our APIs? And then continuing on from that, are we checking for shadow APIs, those APIs that are um, rogue on our network that aren't documented, or those APIs that are um, perhaps a zombie API, something left over from a system that was shut down, but now it's still accessible for other users to get to and potentially take advantage of? What are its vulnerabilities? Are our APIs documented and using best practices? Are we making sure we're keeping those configurations up to date, making sure the APIs are included in that? We're we using best practices for our development. 
And then also looking into how are we developing our APIs and securing them? Are we testing them before we push them out? Are we looking for those uh, misconfigurations before we put it into our network? And then are we able to detect API abuse? Can we see if somebody is now piggybacking into my access to that my health app to say, hmm, I am Phil too. I'm going to access into that. So we need to be able to detect if there's any abuse happening and if they're trying to get into somewhere else from the valid APIs that might be already authenticated into our network. And also looking how do we respond and recover from API-based attacks? Are we able to put in blocks? Are we able to uh, get this API back up if we do have to take it down? Now that, you know, with everything that we had there and saying all these different things we have to do for compliance and ask ourselves these questions. And for instance, that example I was just talking about there a minute ago about maybe we have five different compliance initiatives. Oh my, that could be a lot of requirements. That could be a lot of things that I'm going to have to start looking into and mapping into it. It doesn't have to be super cumbersome. But we can look at things, sorry, a little bit of a format issue there um, on the upload, but a few things that we want to actually do for simplifying our strategy in APIs is looking at five different key areas. Now, note it's not one-to-one. -one. It is actually, um, you can't really map requirement to requirement. You can't quite get, there is overlap though. And so when you look at these different key areas, especially around APIs, where we do discovery and inventory, where we continually perform discovery APIs, we want to be able to look at that, find where they are in our network, determine what our network is. Do we have more east-west based traffic inside of our network? So those APIs talking, where are those APIs? The ones going north-south, going in and out of the network, maybe going to our third parties, going to customers, going to other business units. Determining the API's function. What is it doing? Why, why is it doing this? Maintaining an API inventory and endpoints is a part of that. And then looking into development and governance, having a formal review process, or if you already have one, make sure APIs are included. APIs have been too much uh, excluded from different components and policies. Implement that life cycle. So if you are using a life cycle, make sure APIs are a part of it or create a new one for APIs and management. Review and test APIs for misconfigurations. Create best practices. Make sure that's incorporated as part of your API development and that they are testing for things before they put it out into production there. And then look into the compliance and audit. Determine your compliance scope. Understand what kind of data do you have and what these APIs are accessing and what APIs would be potentially in scope and understanding those things. And regularly conduct your a reviews of your APIs. Don't know why I had a thumbs up there. It's probably my hand gesture. Um, and make sure you are also reviewing your third-party integrations. That is key. If you do not review APIs that you are ingesting from third parties or making sure that they are keeping their own security of their APIs. Now that becomes a potential weak point. They might have vulnerable APIs that are coming in that are authenticated and allowed through. Now you have this potential weak point and there's not much you can do. And after that, Look to protecting and detecting APIs. Validate the data and limit data exposure. Make sure your APIs aren't going out there or make sure that they have rate limits applied to them, that input is validated so that they can't access more than, than they need to. Detect and protect your APIs at choke points. Think of like API gateways or management systems like Kong or F5. Anything that APIs are more congregated at or go through, those are great places to start putting detection and protection elements of those APIs at. 
And then log and review API activity. So part of that requirement in PCI on under 10 to make sure that APIs are part of your logs. And then have robust authentication controls. There is a lot of basic OAuth that is happening or access that is happening out there. So using something like OAuth or having something a little bit more advanced to make sure that that basic authentication can't be broken easily or passing API keys in the clear, which unfortunately has been seen quite a bit. And then lastly, hunt and respond to threats. Make sure you are able to hunt for API abuse, see it, and any other threats that are coming through to your APIs. Respond to active threats. Make sure you have a plan in place for that and an approach to say, how are we going to stop this abuse of this API? So when we need to respond to that, also determine how far they were able to go. Remember, just because an API was compromised or abused doesn't mean it's a breach. Depends on how far they were able to go into your network. So being able to look into the history of that API, where it was going and what it was trying to access and if it was able to access sensitive data. So those are the things you need to be able to do. And of course, document the response action plan for all of that. Make sure that you are able to have those components as part of your recovery, uh, disaster recovery plans, uh, business continuity, and any kind of incident response plans needs to be part. APIs need to be a part of that too. They are critical components as part of your systems out there. All right, so there, <clears throat> there's a lot of things you can do to simplify it. You don't have to take an approach to say all these different requirements I have to get to, um, you know, 20 different requirements per thing. No, keep it simplified. And of course, as compliance requirements are applied, then you can take it from there to take that little bit of an extra step to make sure that you match those compliance requirements. Now, if you do have any questions, please put it in chat. I gave some time here at the end to see if there's anything that we needed to. Uh, but if not, uh, please feel free uh, to reach out to me. My email address is right there and I'll get back to you. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you're able to take a couple of things uh, away from this too. So thank you so much. Thanks so much, Phil. I uh, don't see any questions coming in chat yet. We'll give it a few more seconds, but it does seem like a lot of engagement, a lot of appreciation for what you were talking about.